hard games are like a rite of passage. Maybe not so much nowadays since From Software are between major releases and everyone's fighting each other in battle royale arenas, but beating a hard game comes with a fair heaping of pride. Sometimes it can be a little daunting to approach a famously hard game with the ambition of eventually taking it down, but maybe it's worth it to try an easier game at a higher difficulty? I mean, it's probably a game you've already beaten once before and you won't have to go into it blind, and who knows, it could be fun! I'm here to tell you today that it kind of isn't. Well, it's okay for a lot of games out there, but there's also a select few that go a little crazy when deciding how tricky to make its hard mode. Difficulty balance is not an automatic process, and especially when you've already established the optimal way to play a game. Bouncing off checkpoints does a lot of damage to your enjoyment of a game, so you've got to be careful when making a harder difficulty that you're not abandoning what made your game fun and fair in the first place. Also, I don't really care about one-hit kill modes that are specially designed to be unfair, since you usually know what madness you're getting yourselves in for with those. I see hard mode and I hope for the best. I don't often get the best. Hard modes for easy games have always been a bit of a mixed bag, mainly because every developer seems to have a different idea of how to make their game trickier for certain difficulties. You can make the enemies hit harder, you can remove a lot of the player's health, or, if you're feeling like a tremendous dickhead, you can remove everything that made your game enjoyable. You'll make lots of friends that way. At some point when my editing software was quietly imploding a few weeks ago, I took enough stock to realize that I had been using Vegas for nearly seven years. That's not very interesting, but by proxy, I've been making these kinds of videos for even longer than that. I was told that things would get easier after a while, but they don't. They really don't! There was definitely a time back there when I was talking about the same couple dozen games, but I do try and go out of my way to bring up games that I don't usually have the chance to talk about. That being said, I haven't talked about The Binding of Isaac in ages, and it's actually perfectly relevant for a video complaining about shitty difficulty balancing, since none of this game is balanced. It's a procedurally generated roguelike where you craft a character out of whatever random shit you can find, of course everything's fucked! But, with the release of the Afterbirth Plus DLC, things got substantially more fucked with the addition of Greedier Mode, a harder version of the already established Greed Mode where you defeat enemies to earn coins that you then spend on items to upgrade your character. Greed Mode is actually pretty cool and feels like a more casual, almost arcade-like version of the base game, something you can beat inside 20 minutes without too many problems. Greedier Mode, on the other hand, takes this idea and makes it fucking asinine by reducing the number of coins that drop from defeat a floor full of enemies, making those enemies randomly stronger sometimes, and by adding on another bullshit form to an already brutally hard final boss for this mode. Ultra Greed was a well-designed test of how strong you had made your character in the preceding floors, but Ultra Greedier is just a straight-up abomination who throws around unavoidable damage that has ruined many a promising run in an instant. Greedier mode saps all the fun out of a uniquely enjoyable side mode, and Ultra Greedier doesn't even have the courtesy of keeping Ultra Greed's thick booty. What player would want you now? Platinum games have a certain proclivity for making difficult games. Actually, no, that's not strictly true, since none of these games have characterized themselves as a Dark Souls-esque lesson in sharp difficulty curves and forced adaptability, but rather something more interesting than that. I look at the likes of Bayonetta and Metal Gear Rising and see games that have simple concepts that are combined with massive combo lists for more ambitious players to master and put to the test at higher difficulties. So Platinum Games might not lean towards making inherently difficult games, but they do know how to successfully balance more extreme difficulty levels so that the player feels fairly and sufficiently challenged. But then I played Nier Automata on hard and realized that even the ones you love will eventually betray you. I struggled a lot with Nier Automata initially, if just because dying at any point during the prologue forces you to restart that entire chain of events again from the beginning, which is a really rough way of starting a video game. You know, I stuck it out on normal, I, st I tried really hard, because that's the difficulty that the game recommended to me, which is what I like to do in order to get a, an authentic first impression of a game. 
Imagine if I tried on hard though. I would have never gotten to any of the good shit. And there's so much of it. So I mentioned earlier that I wouldn't be paying too much attention to one hit kill modes and that is very important since Nier Automata has a very hard mode where you die in one hit and just fucking don't. This is a game that already has a pronounced obsession with bullet hell scenarios and trying to navigate all this bullshit is not something that would ever be fun to me. Please point me in the direction of someone who would find this fun so I could fight them. Though, having played a fair chunk of this game at slightly toned down hard difficulty, the difference is not as drastic as you'd hope. You might not die in one hit in hard mode, but most attacks will one-shot you at lower levels and hit you like a train at higher levels, making boss fights a waking nightmare where the price of failure is going back to a checkpoint a fair distance from where a reasonable human being would put one. Even worse, from a balancing perspective, the right kinds of upgrades will make hard mode a walk in the park until you find another sharp difficulty spike and go back to dying in one or two hits again. It's an endless cycle and you can't escape and I, that's why I play video games. The one and only upside in Nier Automata is that you can adjust the difficulty at any point in the game's menu, which I think is a sign that Platinum didn't want anybody to get too upset with their half assed attempts at difficulty balancing. Just as well, because I've heard stories of some players taking five hours to beat the game's prologue on hard mode. And when you consider that a lot of other games use the intro as a basic tutorial so that you can adapt to the pace of the combat and stuff, this is kind of ridiculous, really. How am I supposed to enjoy all this layered symbolism when I keep dying all the time? I wanna care, but it's hard, man. I don't think any genre is undermined as much by higher difficulties than horror is. And just think about it for a second. If you're playing a scary game and you die a ton of times, you will be experiencing the the punishment for failure, which is usually a jump scare or a gory death, a lot of different times. And you will eventually become so desensitized to that that it becomes more of a chore than a punishment in a way. And should you ever get to this point, that is when you start noticing even some of the great horror games, they start to unravel a little bit. If you see the average horror game as a selection of peaks and troughs of being scared at scary things, frequent exposure to the peaks makes them gradually lose value as you see the same death cutscene for the 40th time. Hard modes have frequently ruined the very deliberate pacing of horror games with stop-start reminders that you aren't quite as good as you might think you'd be at avoiding terrifying aliens. Nightmare Mode in Alien Isolation was released in an update a few months after the game first came out with the intention of offering a special kind of difficulty above the standard hard mode for ambitious players to tackle. Part of the update was also to release a novice difficulty which tones down the Xenomorph's artificial intelligence and gives you more room to breathe in this breathless horror game. This kids is what is known as hedging your bets. Because Nightmare Mode is a very unique time. I felt like hard mode was the best way to play Alien Isolation since it acted as the perfect blend of the alien being so damn strong and relentless that you shuffled around the space station in a constant state of fear, while also not being so unfair as to replace that fear with frustration when you die over and over again. Nightmare jumps over this completely by stacking the odds so heavily against the player that it's virtually impossible to beat this mode without a huge heaping of luck and all the patience in the world. The major headlines are that every enemy in the game does way more damage now with the Xenomorph likely killing you in one shot, you can no longer see your health or ammo count, and the motion tracker that was so helpful for getting a read of roughly where the alien was at any one point is now broken and unreliable and what the fuck? Alien Isolation's version of Super Hard is to deliberately mislead you with false information that ends up getting you killed very quickly. And it doesn't feel like your fault because it's false information and why would you do this? Even worse, there's a chance when you get caught by the alien that it doesn't immediately kill you, and instead its second mouth will be replaced with a reminder that if you're enjoying this video and want to see more, then hit subscribe and click that bell for notifications of every new upload. It's not a fun time by any means, and I still think that hard mode is the best way to actually enjoy this game, but I kind of like nightmare mode for making things oddly more realistic in a way. At times, under more reasonable circumstances, you'll just die because the Xenomorph's AI is a little too smart for its own good. And in Nightmare Mode, you die way more times because of factors that are out of your control, which is roughly how I think it would go down in real life. I'm gonna guess that was not the plan.
Some of you might remember that I've talked about something like this before. It was a few years ago, but I tackled the subject of good hard modes that act as a successful extension of the difficulty available in normal mode and don't create something dumb and stupid and aggravating. In my relative naivety, I brought up the newer Fire Emblem games for having hard modes in them that change how you go about playing Fire Emblem. Lunatic and Lunatic Plus replaces all of the tactics with an experience that feels a lot like a puzzle game, as you search somewhat fruitlessly for a solution to this very complicated scenario where death is frequent and depressingly inevitable. You know, fun. Lunatic has shown up in a few of the more recent Fire Emblem games, including New Mystery of the Emblem, which never made it out of Japan, so... okay. But Awakening and Fates both had this difficulty, and that was very important because these games marked a, a departure from the more traditionally difficult setting of Fire Emblem to something a little more casual. And this existence of a harder difficulty is designed for people to gravitate towards if you want a more difficult Fire Emblem experience. Doesn't, it doesn't work like that in practice though. It'll be fascinating to see what Nintendo chooses to carry over to Fire Emblem Three Houses and if Lunatic is balanced that it isn't as stupid as it was in Awakening and Fates. It's a pretty standard affair with there being more enemies and those enemies having stronger skills and in order to get past them you simply have to play slightly more optimally than at other difficulties. You're gonna make fewer mistakes and play well and you'll probably be okay. However, Fire Emblem Awakening decides that this is not enough difficulty for one game and introduces Lunatic Plus, a difficulty setting that didn't make it into Fates for some reason. I couldn't possibly imagine why. You know all that deep tactical knowledge that you need so that Lunatic won't kick the shit out of you? Yeah, that's not important in Lunatic Plus because the vengeful god you should be praying to is Lady Luck and her ability to crush dreams of beating the first goddamn chapter in the game. The mode reserved for apparent Fire Emblem Masters has you fighting incredibly strong enemies that randomly have borderline broken special skills, like ones that reduce incoming damage or increase outgoing damage by absurd numbers. Anyone who's tried and likely failed Lunatic Plus will know that I am not exaggerating when I say that luck has to be on your side if you want to beat some of these chapters. And if it isn't, there's literally nothing you can do about it. It's a telling sign that there aren't a lot of guides available online for Lunatic Plus. Not because no one's beaten it, but because it's very hard to explain what you need to do to replicate a strategy that relies so heavily on the right kind of dice roll. When you're having to reset a run because you didn't get the right kind of stat growths, then things may have gotten out of hand somewhere along the line. I remember when Permadeath was as far as this series would go. How did we fall so far? Far. An ultra hard difficulty is only as tricky as the type of game it resides in. That's how I've always felt about super bosses and RPGs and how what you're really fighting here is the extreme end of how high these stats can go. There's a technical limit to how hard each genre of game can be and still be physically possible. Which is perhaps why shooter games are either not that bad or unachievable. If you put me in a room full of bad guys who can shoot me dead in a couple of shots, then yeah, we may run into a few issues with the delicate balancing of difficulty that you seem to be ignoring. Why are you doing that? Also, it seems like shooters are the one type of game to chastise you for picking any difficulty below hard mode, actively encouraging you to get your shit pushed in by the hardest difficulty. Which is always nice, I suppose. Doom 2016 is a game where many things are happening on screen at once, making it an adventure which at times may overload a play with explosions and enemies firing laser beams at you. It's not a hard game, exactly, because there's a ton of ways of keeping yourself alive and ammo is plentiful so you can unload into every demon you come across, but you will take damage in most fights you get into. And this changes the dynamic of Ultra Nightmare Mode, which is pretty much Nightmare Mode with one fundamental difference. You get one life before you need to restart from the beginning. There's a reason why it's locked from the start. Nightmare is a problem, but it works because despite the huge amount of damage you take, Doom is fairly generous with checkpoints and won't punish you too hard for being shot at by the dozens of enemies that you stumble across in every other room. Taking these checkpoints away is one massive step too far and renders this game nigh on unplayable and definitely close to unbeatable. A fact made all the more evident when it was revealed that no one at id Software was able to beat Doom on Ultra Nightmare, which is another way of saying that it hasn't been properly tested by the people who matter. 
This bit-by-bit -bit style of overcoming a challenge is reminiscent of so many other things I've seen before, but when the challenge is huge and long and stupid, then I realize I mentally checked out very early on. Please don't make a fun game unfun, that seems very counterintuitive. This has been Rabbit Luigi, and it's worth mentioning that Ultra Nightmare is not impossible since many people have beaten it since Doom came out a few years ago, but I don't really like this style of just putting hard content out there into the world and hoping that people will make sense of it eventually, because at some point, this type of challenge stops becoming fun, stops being a challenge, and starts becoming just a chore, thing you do to prove you can, and that's that's a little scary and dangerous and the start of an arms race of difficulty. Do you even know what you get for beating Ultra Nightmare in Doom? You don't get anything, you get nothing. Except an overwhelming sense that you could have spent that time better. Have you got a topic that you'd like me to talk about next week? Make sure you leave a comment about that down below because I'll be taking the most interesting suggestions and making a poll on the next video. In fact, here's one right now that I prepared from last week. I'll be revealing the winner of the poll on Twitter and taking suggestions for games to talk about that are related to that topic. So feel free to follow me over there so we can keep in touch. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.